All right, so I'm going to do another one of these uh, Rolex shopping videos because my first one was wildly successful. So uh, today we're going to look for a an Explorer 2 Polar, all right, which is 16750. Whoa, no, no, no. 16570. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit more of a particular search this time because in my previous video of the 14060M, that reference number tells me everything that I need to know. So, for example, they didn't make the 14060M with uh, tritium, I don't think. I'm pretty sure they just made it like after 2000 or 2001 maybe, something like that, where... All of the watches have uh, Swiss-made dials with Super, super, Lumin super Luminova. Uh, they all, none of them have solid end-link bracelets. They all have hollow end-link bracelets. Um, and they all have holes cases. You know, even past the 2003 area where Rolex switched to no holes cases. So that first video of the 14060M it, it didn't show all of the criteria that I would normally have to input to my search. So this time we're going to do filter by year, United, I mean location, United States, and year. Uh, we're going to do, you know, I like to do it manually. They give you these options up here, uh, you know, of a range, but when it's, it's close. But I want to do uh, from 1999 when uh, they stopped using Luminova and they moved to Super Luminova uh, and all the way up to look I'm gonna stick to holes cases for this video if you're not as picky as me and you're okay with a no holes case which I am too my my sub my Submariner has a no holes case and I think that it's elegant in a way that the holes cases are not, but just for this video, we're gonna look for a holes case. So that that pretty much covers it, 1999 to 2002. I'll put 2003 because I think some of them, uh, I think that's the year that they switched over, but we'll see. So that's the year. Um, now, this was the this was the the selection I couldn't find last time. So we're gonna do with original papers, okay? Now you might think, well, why not just do with original box and papers? Oh, we can do both. Well, the reason I just do papers normally is because you can source a box later, okay? There's nothing unique about the box. There's nothing unique to a particular watch about the box. You can get the exact same box later if you really want to. Um, but in my opinion, you know, it's actually kind of better not to have the box because it, that's just one more thing that you have to store and one more thing that you have to worry about with damage and whatnot. So unless you're selling the watch, you know, if the day comes where you want to sell the watch, then yeah, I would go ahead and look for a, uh, a box you know, and it has to be the correct box. It can't be anything different, but it's easy enough to do. Uh, but if you're not selling your watch, if you're planning on keeping it and wearing it and, you know, enjoying it, I really don't see why, I really don't see the, whole, the big deal about having the box. It's nice and all, but there's a downside to it too. So anyway, we'll do with box and papers and with just papers. Um, okay. Did I get everything? I, uh, yeah, that's everything in terms of filters. Okay, so we're going to sort by low to high. And we have 12 results. And of those, a lot of them are black dials, as you can see. Um, okay, so, so some of these I've looked at before. And I've obviously, you know, saved. Um, <clears throat> but it's been a while. Uh, 
Look, I would be looking for a polar dial, a white dial, but just for demonstration's sake, we'll look at some of these black dials. Like this first listing looks like it might be from David SW because, I don't know, this is just how they hold their, their watches when they take pictures. Yeah, so let's see. I know for a fact that David SW polishes their watches, okay? Any of these big companies, these big outfits, are going to polish almost every every watch that comes through their doors. So for that reason, I would just pass on this straight away, even though it doesn't look so bad. Um, the lugs, they don't have pronounced chamfers, but, you know, for your average person, it's, it's a perfectly fine watch, but we're not average people. We look for, you know, we're very particular about what we want. Um, yeah, yeah, look at, you know, the, the coronet is very dull. It's obviously been polished, but... It, you know, and I'm downplaying it because when I had my GMT, my 16710 Pepsi, I loved that watch, okay? But the one thing that bugged me to hell and I couldn't sleep at night because of it was the coronet. You know, I can get past the watch being polished, you know, because in my mind, I know that one day I can give it to Rolex to, to fix it up and give it the, the Rolex polish. But there's just something about a whittled down coronet on the clasp that just irks me. It just kills me, you know. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna skip that. Let's just look at these polar dials, to be honest with you, because if we're really going for what we want, uh, it's the polar dials. Now, before I click on this one, well, you click on it. I I know this watch. I was gonna buy this watch, okay. As you can see, it's unpolished, and it, it really is unpolished, with papers, and it's beautiful. Um, unpolished, it's scratched up. I mean, there's there's wear everywhere on the bezel, on the case, on the bracelet, but it is, um, it's gorgeous, you know? I would just keep the watch as is. I wouldn't get it polished, but it's nice knowing that I can bring a, a virginal unpolished piece to Rolex to give it their polish, okay? Now, what I wanted to say about this, about this watch and about this search in general is if you search on Chrono24 for long enough, you'll start to find sellers that you really like. So, I, a second ago I just talked about David SW. And I think I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with them for 90% of the watch buying public out there. But for me, with my stricter criteria, they're not the seller for me, you know. Um, and when you search for long enough, you will find sellers that are for you. Like this seller put unpolished in the description with papers. So immediately I'm like, hmm, OK, I appreciate them doing that. Um, and then if you look at the description, they give a nice, robust description uh, about what happened with the watch or what they did with it. So the owner of this watch is certain to set themselves apart, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this beautiful timepiece make a great gift for yourself. Uh, I make every effort to describe my watches as accurately as possible. This timepiece is in unpolished condition, uh, unpolished factory finish. Uh, all black present in bezel. So what he's referring to there is sometimes the black paint in the in the bezel, you know, like uh, the four and the six and the little triangles. Sometimes over time that'll fade away, which isn't really a big deal, but it is nice that that it's all present. Um, so I like descriptions like this. So immediately when I saw this, I was like, whoa, let me check out this seller. And it's M&B Watches. And I'm very familiar with them. I went from Chrono24 to their actual website, and I looked at the watches on their website, and they have a lot of unpolished pieces on their website. So a tip for you if you're looking on Chrono24 is make a note of sellers that you like, okay? Maybe even open up a new tab on your computer or whatever uh, in Chrome or in your browser uh, and open it up to their website. Okay, and just keep that tab open, you know, keep it saved, keep it bookmarked, 
because when the time really comes to buying, you want to go through their stock first, okay? Before you go on Chrono24 looking at random sellers and random dealers that may or may not be shady, if you find one that you know and trust, um, even if you haven't bought from them, if you just like, if you can just tell that they're a trustworthy seller, uh, go through their stock first. If they don't have anything, if they don't have what you're looking for, then you can go to Chrono24. But these guys, M&B watches, I love what they have. They have a lot of unpolished pieces. You can see here, trusted seller since 2018. Uh, this dealer owns a store in which you can view the watches. So that's always a, a good thing. That's always a positive. Uh, 128 watches sold and 4.9 out of 5 stars. So, yeah, I love this, this seller. I... I almost wish that I did buy this watch from them because it's definitely going to sell eventually. But, you know, hopefully they'll they'll have more in the future. So, this is a great watch. Uh I'll save it uh, unsave it and save it again. So, this is our first contender right here. Now, I also saved this one. Let's see why. Looks pretty good so far. Hmm. Um, okay, I mean, this lug looks a little thin, to be honest, but it does have the chamfer. Um, I do think that it's a aftermarket chamfer because Rolex doesn't leave the this part up here so thick. It's, it's very thin up here, and then it gets a, gradually thicker down here. This looks like it's even all the way, all the way through. Uh, same with this side. So I think this was done by a third party. You know. Yeah, I mean the cornet looks pretty good, but it just doesn't have that that luster that an unpolished piece has. Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, a little bit dull. A little bit, uh, you know, milk toast. The bracelet looks good. That brushing looks nice, I must say. The lines, if you look at the grain of the brushing, what I've noticed with some polished pieces is they will get this grain, they will achieve this grain, but it'll be slanted, like the lines will be going this way or this way. Not so dramatic as what I'm pointing out, but if you really look closely, the lines of the polishing is not parallel to the lines of the actual uh, link, you know? So that's something to look, look out for. And this watch does have parallel lines, which is nice. Um, that being said, I don't know if it was done by Rolex. Uh, do they say anything about it? Nashville. Okay, in good finish, it comes with Swiss only dial. There's warranty. The case is thick with noticeable chamfers. There's some light wear present. I don't know. I mean, whenever they say that the case is in really good condition, but they don't say whether it's been polished or not, that's kind of a red flag for me because, yeah, it, you know, if you're polishing the watch, it better be in good condition, you know? Like, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be in bad condition with a bunch of wear if you polished it. Um, and we're looking for, we're looking for unpolished pieces, so I, I don't like it, you know, it's okay, but it's not what I'm looking for. So, unfavorite that. On to the next one. Yeah, straight away I don't like it. Yeah, that's, it's pretty bad. It's been polished pretty badly. Yeah, on to, on to the next one. I just, I don't like the whole listing. Um, okay. Let's see. Yeah, this has also been polished badly. Ah, which is such a shame, you know? It's a shame because I feel kind of bad for the watch itself. But I also feel bad for the buyer who buys this eventually because they may not realize what they're getting 
and at the same time, they're paying $10,000 for this watch. I mean, a year or two ago, this was 8000 7000 you know. And even that was pretty expensive for this watch, if I'm being honest. It's, it's a pretty underappreciated model, and, you know, to pay $10,000 for it, I think is a little bit over the top. So this is from a private seller, okay? It's not from a dealer. So just unless I'm blown away by the description that they give and if they give a story of how they got it and why they don't want it, fine, that's one thing. If you can kind of glean the enthusiasm from what they say in their listing, then maybe it's okay. But otherwise, if they give just a little, let's see what this guy, yeah, this is not sufficient for me, just two sentences. Um, you know, it's, I just don't, I don't see why you wouldn't take the time to write a little bit more. Write about what kind of collector you are, write about, you know, your interests in the hobby, what you're buying next, if this sells, you know, let me get to know you a little bit in the description. Don't just give me the, the bare bones facts about the watch. I know that already. You know, I know it's, look, I know it's from 1999, 1999, it says it right here. You don't need to also say Swiss only dial paperwork, 1999, shows surface wear, which can be fixed with a polish. Okay, sorry. He's, he does say since the wash doesn't appear to be over polished. Hmm. Well, if it's been polished at all, then it's a problem for me. But I, I, I hear what he's trying to say. You know, most people just don't want an over-polished watch. Um, I, I would leave it as is. Me too, but um, it looks like maybe it already has been polished. Um, yeah, he's right. It's not over-polished, but it definitely is polished. He's not really giving a good look at the, at the lugs. You know, we've gotten a few of these from the top shots um the best one is this one and from what i can tell this is round not sharp and and it's quite thin so it, it's significantly thinner than this one right i mean it just looks weird too it looks like the shape is off no yeah no i mean best of luck to this guy but this is not the unpolished piece that we're looking for. All right, let's see why I favorited this one. This is from Swiss Watch Expo. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I don't like them. Um, because look at this. I mean, this looks like a stock photo, right? This looks like it was professionally touched up. It's just so white here. It's so crispy. Look at how crispy everything is. Look at how you know, the light here reflects, it looks like a commercial, like a poster you'd see on, on the subway for, you know, a brand new watch. And it's probably not a, a brand new watch. It's probably used, which is fine, but well, look, if the coronet looks like that, then maybe I stand corrected because that is very sharp and so is the case. Now, it's a no-holes case, but, you know, I would, uh, if it's truly unpolished, and if it's basically new old stock, if what I'm seeing is correct, then it would be worth considering this piece, you know. If you want to hold out for a holes case, then fine, but if this is unpolished with papers, I think it's too good to pass up. It's a little expensive, it's over 10000 but... Let's see what they say, just to confirm that it is, yeah, Swiss Watch Expo. Yeah, mint condition, see, look, I don't know what that means, okay? Any watch can be mint condition if you fix it up and edit the, the pictures, okay? Any watch can be mint condition, so mint condition means nothing. If you see that, completely ignore it. What you want to look for is service history and or polishing history. Okay? Was it sometimes they'll say 
the watch has been serviced by a certified watchmaker, okay, that translates to our guy in the back opened up the case back and made sure everything was okay. And maybe he polished it up too, you know? It does not mean it was sent off to Rolex to be serviced by them. So, yeah. On to the next one. I mean, look, this might be for you. This is not... I'm not saying this This is a, a bad listing. This is probably a pretty good watch. For the majority of people, this is perfectly fine. But since our criteria is so strict, we're looking for details about polishing, okay? So I'm going to unfavorite that. I also just don't like Swiss Watch Expo, okay? I said it in my last Rolex shopping video. Um, I don't like them. I don't... They. It looks like a robot made that listing okay and i'm not interested in that this one here this is probably oh okay in my last video i mentioned sea wave diamonds i bought my gmt master 2 16710 from them okay it was actually a trade and i traded in my explorer 2 and blah 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 but i, I got a watch from them and you know it was polished okay um their, their store is on 47th Street in Manhattan. And if you know 47th Street, it's like the Diamond Street, the Diamond District. And they all kind of know each other. They're all friends. And almost certainly, uh, this dealer, Sea Wave Diamonds, has a, a watch polisher that he walks down the block. You know, they're all on the same block. He walks down the block, gives this polisher all of his watches, and the polisher charges maybe a hundred bucks per watch or whatever their arrangement is and sea wave diamonds gets back these you know quote unquote mint mint condition or minty watches um when in reality they're they're polished but look otherwise i do think that i like this guy i think he's a very trustworthy guy so if you're not as particular as me about polishing then they're a great place to buy uh, a watch from Especially if you're in New York, I would go see them in store and see what they have and talk to the guy. But, you know, just for me, I know that they polish. And even if I didn't know, I mean, this is this is not good, in my opinion. This is polished down to, to nothing. And look, this is a perfect example of what I was talking about with the grain. You see how the grain is not perfectly parallel to the, to the uh, link? Like, look at it. It kind of goes this way, right? kind of drifts off to the left this one is maybe a little straighter but then you know over here there's it's just it's not parallel and that's clear indication to me that it was done by a third party and to be honest with you not very well the guy who polished this watch is probably polishing watches all day long he gets you know tons of watches from other dealers on 47th street and you know he just eyeballs it I mean, this, look at this lug. In my opinion, that's bad. That's a really bad polishing. It's so rounded. Um, I would stay far away from this watch, even though I would not necessarily stay far away from this dealer. He knows about polishing. If you talk to him and you say, look, I'm looking for an unpolished piece, he does have unpolished pieces. He knows the value of an unpolished piece. Um, but at the same time, he's a, he's a watch dealer in Manhattan. And the vast majority of his clients are people who don't really don't really care so much about polishing, but we do. So that's why I traded that GMT. It, I couldn't get over it. It had that kind of uneven grain polishing or, you know, brushing on the on the bracelet. The coronet was almost look, this is it wasn't this bad, but it was reminiscent of this for sure. I mean, look at that. That's awful. Right. That looks like that looks like a shadow. You know, that's the ghost of the coronet that used to be on this watch, that used to be on this clasp. I mean, that that's, that's bad. That's really bad. They, you know, if I didn't know and kind of like the guy, I would say that he should be ashamed of himself, but ugh, I, I hate it. I hate it. And then he wanted to charge ten, ten thousand dollars ten $10,000, almost $11,000 for it. It's just, it's not right in my opinion. And last, but maybe not least, is this 
reserved similar price 10,700 uh, it's by a private seller uh, you know another description that doesn't excite me too much it's just best example of the market today Swiss only dial incredible condition the watch appears to be a new condition fully linked to original blah 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 the watch was serviced once and is keeping time within chronometer standards okay well Anybody can service this watch once and put it into chronometer standards. That doesn't mean it was done by Rolex. You know, this is a pretty confident statement. This is probably the best example of the 16570 on the market today. Really? I, I think that's a bit of a stretch, dog. Okay, let's see. Well, yeah, look, I mean... I stand corrected. It's beautiful. <laughs> okay. The coronet is fantastic. Everything is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Look, this is a phenomenal watch. I would love to buy this watch. Look, this is how this is how the lug should look, okay? Sharp, squared off on the bottom from this angle. The chamfers. You see, you can't see the chamfers up here, but slowly they appear. Here's the chamfer. Comes out. To, it flares out towards the end. This is a bad angle with the shadow so you can't really see but um yeah and this is how the grain of the lug should look it's kind of a a uh, circular grain that goes inward towards here it's beautiful the, the bezel has no scratches on it um yeah i i think this is unpolished to be honest with you uh i think there's not enough wear on it to warrant a polish. So if it was serviced once, even if it was serviced by a third party, I don't think that that third party would have polished it because it's just not, it, it wasn't in bad enough condition to be polished, you know? Um, this is the watch I would go for. A bonus, a, a, you know, a nice little bonus that you get is the Swiss only dial, which was only made for about a year. Um, which is awesome. Yeah, I would love to buy this watch. Honestly, it's from a private seller. But I would, you know, I'd want to talk to the guy first. Obviously, it's reserved, so someone already jumped on it. But yeah, this is this is probably the best one that we've seen today. Um, speaking of which, let's look at what we've seen today. So, two. Two examples. One that I already know and love and wish that I bought, but it's still available. I could still buy it, but I gotta save up a little more. But this watch, fantastic. If you're looking for an Explorer 2, I think this is the one to get because it's got wear. Okay? If you're buying a used watch, it's gonna have wear. But it's unpolished. It's it's original to its to Rolex factory uh finishing, which is great. And it's just a nice looking piece too. It's you know just looks sharp. Everything looks looks clean. No real significant damage. Just your average wear and tear, which is great. Um, and then this one that we just saw, you know, which is in better condition, but is $1,000 more. And it's from a, uh, a private seller. You know, this one from M&B Watches, it's, they, the, they have a storefront. They have a brick and mortar store. They have a reputation. They have, you know, a website. Um... And so personally, between the two, I would buy this one. I'd save fifteen hundred bucks, buy this one, uh, and and have a great dealer to go to in the future. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helped a little bit, or at least it was a little bit entertaining. You know, I love doing this stuff. If you if you're like me, you know, you love looking through Chrono, Chrono Twenty Four, even if you're not actually interested in buying a watch. You know, we just. We go on Chrono 24 and we look around and it's just something we do. So hopefully you enjoyed doing it with me today. No All right. Peace out.